everyone. So we'll be doing section 16.6 .6 today with parametric surfaces and their areas. And perhaps we'll even get into just the surface integral of the scalar field. So the first thing is these parametric surfaces. We haven't done this yet. Everything we parameterize has been a curve. So how do you parameterize a surface, a parametric surface? Think of surfaces that we've seen in Cal 3. Not curves. Think of like what a sphere, a plane, a paraboloid, um, a cone. Think of all these surfaces. We haven't written those in parametric form yet. Like an x squared plus y squared equals z squared and all that. So with a curve, you remember how it was set up? We did like R of t, and you could parameterize a curve, but that was only one parameter. A parametric surface, you need two parameters. That's the key. So I just want to start with that. So you always can recognize or know what to do when it comes to parameterizing the surface. You're going to have two parameters. Where this parameterize a curve, parametric curve, I wanted to throw a way off from the side, only has how many parameters? One. Just one parameter. That's the difference. Might as well just leave this up for a little while so you don't get confused. You go, that's parameterizing the curve, R of t, and then we have what? You know, make it a vector. You get your x component, your y component, your z component. Well, with a surface, it's going to have two parameters. So I'm going to start with a simple example. How about a plane? And I'm just going to make up some plane equation. Everyone, here you go. How about x plus y? plus z equals 5. And you and I are going to make a parametric representation of the plane. So the first part of today's lesson, we got to make sure we all know how to parametrize surfaces. Sound good? <clears throat> we just got to make sure we can parametrize a plane, a sphere, etc. So the key is, we'll get an R ready. You need how many parameters? Two. Um, you can use letters like U and V. Look at all these formulas here today. See all the U's and V's? You could definitely use U and V if you want, but a lot of times you can just say, well, this has X's and Y's and Z's. You can use parameters that are the same letters in here. You can just say, I'm going to let X equals X and let Y equals Y. And that's how I'm going to start this one. How about let's let those two be the two letters that are going to be our parameters? How about X and Y? You go, why? Because many of the things we've done in this course, we'll continue to do this. We, we, Go ahead and we project things onto which plane? The xy plane. We project things on the x plane commonly. Sometimes you project onto the yz plane, but most of the time we're projecting onto the xy plane, so I'm going to write that like this. So I'm saying let x equal x and let y go. So I am making a parametric representation of this plane. Let x equal x, let y equal y. But I can't write z here because this has to only have these two letters. So can I do 5 minus x minus y? That'll do. That would be great. I'm going to write something for z. Just solve for the z. What do you get? 5 minus x minus y, like you said. Very good. We just parameterize that surface. I hope you find that easy. You go, that's it? That's all you got to do? Many times. A lot of times you go, I'll use x and y. I know it's not every time, because sometimes it may have letters u and v. <coughs> and that problem giving you. You'll just continue to use u and v as your parameters. But if we're projecting a lot of these things onto the xy plane, and we're going to be doing double integrals of it, then it's something we do commonly. Put the two variables in x and y. Now, I do want to give you another example of a plane. What if they ever gave you something like this? Uh, you will not see this nearly as often. But what if you said you got a point in a plane, and the point is 1, 2, 3. This is a vector. That's in a plane. This is a vector in a plane. Um, there are two of them. Four, five, six, and seven, eight. Both of these vectors are in a plane. That's a point of blank. This is another way you go, well, how would I do this? How can I make a parametric representation of this plane? Well, I can do this just like we did a line. I could use letters you wouldn't be. I'm going to start with the vector as a point. What was the point? 
One, two, three. I'll put you in front. What was the vector that's in the plane? Four, sure, yeah, right. Four five, six. And B. Seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. There it is. I just parameterized the plane. <laughs> Look at it. But you will not you will not do that nearly as often as the previous problem. That's why I started the last one. Cool. And uh, can you write this in a neater way? Sure. You can collect everything, make it just three components, and I'll do that. Do you notice this is similar to parameterizing a line, where with a line you need a point and a parallel vector. With this, we're saying you got the point and you got the two planes, two vectors lined in a plane. So if you want to be <coughs> point this out, what would it be? One plus what? 4u plus 7b. There's your x component. What's the y component? 2 plus 5u plus 8b. Mm -hmm. Alright. This out of the way. You can always put the curve back up later. And what's the last component? I just wanted to show that to you. You might see this in the textbook. Now, I didn't want it to freak you out. You go, oh, that's another way to parameterize the plane. If they gave you this information. So the point in the plane, I can say this is the parametric representation of that point. This is which component? X. That's X. That's Y. But once you all copy this, let me go back and give you a more common setup that you're going to see. Can I erase? Okay, cool. So what are you going to see more common with this with planes? Oh, not that. This is what you're going to see many times in the next few sections. It's something like this. I mean, here's a plane from our course. Um, x plus 4y, or here, 3x plus 4y plus z equals 12. Can you parameterize that plane? Sure. How many parameters? Two. You want to use x and y? Let x equals x, let y equals y, what's z? I'll leave enough room. Let's see. 3x minus 4y. 12, 12 minus 3x minus 4y. Accomplished. So that's what I want to spend a few more minutes. We did a plane. Here, we'll make a checklist. We did a plane. Let's do, uh, how about a paraboloid? Let's cover all the main surfaces. Paraboloid spheres, planes, cones, and cylinders. We'll definitely do a cylinder. All right, here's a paraboloid from our course. Can you parameterize it? All right, parameterize. Make a parametric representation of that surface right there. Do you remember that's the windsock going like this? Mm -hmm. Woo. On the z-axis. Can you make a parametric representation of that? All right, you want to project it onto the xy plane if we're working a double integral eventually? Sure. So what two parameters are going to use? I can let x equals x, and I'll let y equals y. That's what we mean. Let x equal x, and let y equal y. You don't have to use u and what? V. I think the only time I use u and v is the problem originally had that. So what do you get? X squared. X is x, y is y, and what do you X plus y squared. You got it? Hey, what if... What if it was a paraboloid, but it was on like the y axis? It had like a plus two. Can you parameterize that? Make a parametric representation of that surface. What two letters do you want to use? X, Y, Z. I think that would be appropriate. You said write it in terms of. Let x equals x and let z equals z, there's your two parameters. And we'll have everything in terms of those two parameters. Great idea. Not much room there. Not much room there, but what goes in the middle? X squared plus z squared. I hope you find this easy. Is this too Keep in mind though, how do you do a curve? How many parameters? Just one R of T, like a curve. These are surfaces, right? Paraboloids and planes and stuff. All right, hey, let's put parabola down. Sure. 
object. Okay, let's talk about a cylinder. How about a circular cylinder? It's not hard, everyone, but it's going to be a little different than those last two. Like we need something to describe. How about a circular cylinder centered on the z axis? Let's figure out, we're going to parameterize a circular cylinder centered on the z axis. Do you remember what that looked like in Cartesian? Something like this. In three space. Can you help me come up with a parametric representation of that? Well, this is not as easy as before because I don't see the x and the y and the z, do you? So we're going to use theta. How about that? We'll use sines and cosines. Because what's sine square root of theta? Plus cosine square root of theta. That helps us out. So this is how I'm going to parameterize this. I'll start with this. One of my parameters, I'm going to use theta. This is how you do a cylinder. Let one of the parameters be an angle theta. For the other letter, I just need to know what axis is that centered on. So this cylinder is centered on which axis? The z axis. That's going to be my other variable. And watch how this happens. So, hey, I'll leave enough room here. What's going right here? Z. So when a z increases with numbers, it just keeps going up the z axis. But this is that relationship that's going to form on my surface a bunch of circles, right? And I can use this. And then what's the radius, though? That's the only thing I need to know. What's the radius? Three. Three? So I can do how about three <coughs> sine theta? Three sine theta, boom, we're done. We just parameterize that surface. I want you to study it carefully. Notice. Now I'm going to notice. X squared plus Y squared. What's it equal to? Z squared. What's X squared plus? It equals uh, this. Uh, no one say that? You squared this, and then squared this. You add them together. What do you get? 9 cosine squared of theta plus 9 sine squared of theta. Well, what does that equal to? Mathematically, you factor out the 9, and what do you get? Mm -hmm. Equals 9. Right? That's what you're saying. This squared plus this squared always comes out to be 9. You notice this? So that's the relationship between x and y, the circle, the circle, the circle. This just allows this parameter to just what? Take this surface and increase for z. Does that make sense? And you got it. That's how you do cylinder. How about, let's do another axis. How about x squared plus z squared? Let's make this radius 5. Can you do it? And by the way, if you're curious about cosine, sine, you order this, it doesn't matter here. In case in what we're doing right now. That's not important to us right now. Well, what parameters would you want to use? I don't know if it helps, but look through the letter that's missing. Why? So this is a cylinder, circular cylinder, centered on the y-axis. You stay there more. Hey, the order that I write these doesn't matter. The order does not matter. But this has just got to be a lonely y right there. Give the 5 cosine theta and a y. Down zone. Hey, almost done. We're done with the common surfaces we've seen in this course from section 12.6. That was 12.5, but these are all in 12.6. What else was common? Sphere cone. Let's do the cone next. I heard it. Let's do it. Let's do a cone. Now let's do it two ways, okay? Let's do one with theta's like we just saw, but and when this is the equation of a cone, centered on the z-axis, the Cartesian, right? The Cartesian equation of the cone, <coughs> centered on the z-axis, opens up like that, writes the double cone. Could you parameterize just the top cone? Which would be this one? Can you parameterize it? You want to use it like we did the plane in the parabola? You want to do that? Want to use just x and y? Let's do it. And if we just need an equation for the top cone, I can use what? Let x equal x, let y equal y. And what do you get? Uh, any suggestions? Because I only need the top cone. <coughs> That's got to be a z. 
but we're going to write in terms of x and y. That'll do it. So I hope you find that simple. Ah, oh, so the cone wasn't as bad as the cylinder. The cylinder I use like theta and z or something. They what? That would work. Hey, what would be a parametric representation? I don't have to write it down. What would be a parametric representation of the bottom cone? Just put a what right there. Negative. Make it negative. That's what you do. X, Y, and negative there. But I want you to be able to do a cone another way. So, let's come up with a parametric representation of the cone, the double cone, on the z-axis. Can I erase this? Like we did the cylinder. How about this? I'm going to use theta. And then when it, it doesn't matter the other parameter. We could use like a t. Check it out. How about t? Could have signed it. T. Sign data. And let this be t. Now think about it. What's going on in this problem? It looks somewhat like the cylinder. Except with the cylinder, I use like theta and z. The difference here is, number one, I just use the parameter t. Put it in place like that z-axis. And where else did I put the t's? In front of these. So what would happen as the t increased? What would happen with the radius of that circle? Keeps getting bigger and bigger. Is this what? Keeps increasing, increasing, increasing. It makes me go. And then when I'll write this down, notice x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Different from the cylinder. Notice x squared plus y squared would actually equal z squared, not the 9 like before. See the difference? So how can you spot this?